Hi, this is your host, Sabdin Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. We are here at KubeCon, and today we have with us Dennis Duckworth, Director of Product Marketing at Hazelcast. And this is great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Be able to talk about Hazelcast to you and your uh, audience. Perfect. Let's start with Hazelcast. Tell us you know, what you folks do. So, so Hazelcast is a real-time stream processing platform. And a lot of our customers and a lot of other people know us for being an in-memory data grid, which was how we started business. So we accelerate op uh, people's uh, data access. So offloading legacy systems, speeding up things for near real-time performance of their analytics and, and machine learning and so forth. More, more recently, though, we've added a capability for real-time stream processing. So it kind of differentiates us and takes us to that next level because we saw a need for adding this ability to not only store data and serve it up quickly, but also react to that data and, and compute on it in real time. Can you talk about, you know, uh, first of all, the evolution of data and the need importance of real time data? What are the use cases? Is it for everybody or there are some specific industries or use cases? where streaming or real-time data makes more sense? It's becoming more and more apparent that everyone needs the real-time data for uh, competitive advantage and to be able to succeed in the market, if not just to uh, survive in this market. So if you go way back, you had legacy mainframe systems that had the bookkeeping, the ERP systems, um, uh, and the books for the companies. And gradually you added data warehousing to be able to provide some insights based on that, but that was done through offloads of the, the legacy systems, the, the systems of record every weekend, maybe overnight. So the insights that were able to be gained were rather stale by the time the analysts get to that, got to them. Then we speed up and become more, uh, we have databases that, is, that are faster. So we have in memory, for example, that pops up. But still there's a process involved in getting the data ready for that analytics. And, and what Hazelcast saw is that problem is still there and it still limits or it creates a bottleneck for those people who need to get insights from that data. So we speed up the access to the data, but we also then take that access to the data and provide the ability to speed up the analytics that runs on it, the machine learning algorithms and so forth, so that you can get those insights in real time and be able to act on them accordingly. Can you give some use cases of real-time data, you know, Absolutely. when you look things around us? Yeah, F financial services companies, for example, are a big proponent of this. Uh, you think about fraud detection. We have one of the largest credit card issuers in the U.S. that uses us. Every time one of their millions of cards gets swiped, we're doing a fraud, fraud analysis on that swipe to see if it's likely fraudulent and to either uh, uh, decline it or, or allow the uh, excuse me, charge to go through. Um, and you think about the, the scope of that and how many swipes are, are occurring every second, uh, we're able to process for that for them in real time. If you take that to the retail space, we have recommendation engines where it's not good enough just to send an email to someone a week after they've visited your store and say, hey, you, you bought a pair of shoes, maybe you want a, a black belt to go with those shoes. You want to try to catch them while they're engaged with you, whether in the store or on the site, on their mobile app, whatever, and be able to process that and make that recommendation while they're likely to be able to purchase. One other use case, which is, is, is fascinating to me, is in the IoT space, where you, if you look at healthcare, for example, and a um, urgent care center or, or intensive care unit, which has thousands of sensors that are, are attached to these, these patients, and they need to be monitored constantly. It's not enough to have a nurse go around and be looking at these, these measurements out in these sensors to figure out when something goes wrong. You want to try to catch that as soon as that reading goes out of a certain bounds and be able to react, react to it accordingly. And then you take that same IoT use case and you apply it to heavy equipment and machinery in manufacturing. So the IIoT, where you, if you have some ball bearing temperature goes out of range, chances are that machine is going to fail. And if you allow it to fail, it can fail catastrophically and very expensively. Whereas if you sense that temperature varying enough, you can shut down the machine and actually save it for predictive maintenance reasons. If you look at these specific use cases that you, you talked about, uh, what are the main challenges that developers, data scientists, they face when they want to consume or leverage 
you know, you know, real-time streaming data. Yeah. So up to this point, they've had good access to historical data. And that's what, you know, all of the, the machine learning algorithms really are about. You take historical data, you try to build a model based on the patterns that you see there. What they feel the need for now and are finally getting is that ability to have that intersect with a real-time data stream coming in. And so that you can add contextual uh, information and, and enrichment to the data stream coming in. So a data point by itself really doesn't mean anything. It's in this context of history that you can understand what that data point means. And so the challenges for these, these developers is first of all, creating a framework that is able to support that. And typically the infrastructure engineers and, and, and DevOps people need to, to cobble together several different components. So you might have a flink for doing your stream processing, and then you have a Redis or an Aerospike or something like that for your, your data storage. And then you have maybe Zookeeper for doing some orchestration on your flink. And so suddenly you have three different uh, clusters that you need to maintain and to keep up and running because this is, again, real time that you're trying to react to. So what Hazelcast has done is bundled all that capability into one platform so it eases operations, it, it simplifies things dramatically as far as the complexity of the, of the stack goes, and it also adds that, that automatic integration since it's in one platform. Now, let's just you know, scale back and come back to uh, KubeCon. Mm -hmm. Talk a bit about uh, what, what announcements that you made, which also kind of improve the experience you know, of you know, data streaming or the challenges the developer face. At KubeCon here, we announced our, our latest release, which is version 5.2. And this is more of a, a, an evolutionary release rather than a revolutionary release. You, you talked with Manish several months ago about our Viridian serverless release. And, and so that is still there. And what we have done is improve some of, this, some of the important capabilities. So for example, we have tiered storage. Um, so memory, we, we're limited right now in the memory in, in each node of our cluster to 200 gigabytes, which is a lot of data for some people. And if you're running a three node cluster, that's, that's quite a bit of data. But we have customers who have been pushing that limit and looking for ways of expanding that. So we've added the ability to stream disk, uh, data to disk from, from your memory. So if you have some colder data that's not necessarily as important as the data that's in your memory, you now have a, a, an SSD, for example, that you can load in some colder data and have that available on our platform, just not in, in memory. And SSDs have been getting very fast. They're almost to the point of being uh, as, as fast as DRAM. So it's not necessarily a big performance hit, but it gives you that huge data expansion capability. Um, another thing that we added is stream to stream, to stream in, um, joins. So that before we had a single stream of, of real-time data coming through, and then you could join that with your historical data that was in, me in memory. Now we have the ability to take multiple streams of data and treat them as tables and do joins across them. So you, you are able to enrich your insights even more than you were able to before. And finally, for our developer friends, we've added some uh, zero, uh, uh, zero code um, uh, connections or, or, or connect doors to be able to facilitate adding more data sources and more data sinks for this real-time operation. So if you have Kafka running, if you have Kinesis running, if you have any of the major databases on any of the ends, we can, we can support that and be able to stream data from those, get data from those, and also stream data to them. So I'm trying to make things more efficient and, and, and optimize performance at the same time. We are here at KubeCon and you know, this is a lot of open source. Talk a bit about you know, how much open source Hazelcast does, what is the importance of open source for you folks? Open source is very important to us. Our Hazelcast platform is available as open source, um, and everything that we've done uh, historically has been released as open source. We also have an enterprise version, which has advanced, uh, advanced features like security and WAN replication and so forth. But we have many, many customers who are running the open source. As a matter of fact, we keep track through a phone home type of ping of who's running the open source versions in addition to our enterprise versions. And with our release 5.1, we had the greatest uptake of, of, of new installations than, than we've seen historically. And we're even more confident that 5.2 will, will have the same acceptance by the market. If I ask you, what kind of trends are you seeing in terms of adoption of you know, 
real-time streaming data uh, and also with those trends do you see what kind of either challenges are there or opportunities arising from it? Yeah, one of the challenges that we see is, is one of the reasons we're here and, and working with Kubernetes because DevOps tends to be a very, very critical challenge. You can, you can create the most elaborate uh, real-time streaming engine, but if it's not reliable, if not robust and stays up, your dev engine, DevOps engineers are real, really going to hate you because they're the ones who are going to be getting the calls in the middle of the night. So Kubernetes is one of those steps that allows you to be able to have very complex environments and very complex products be able to run in a reliable manner. Um, and so with, with being here at KubeCon, open source is, is very important, being able to support engineers, both the development engineers and the DevOps and SREs in their endeavors to not only create these systems that provide core functionality, but also be able to support them and maintain them as they go forward. Dennis, thank you so much for sitting down with me and talk about not only Hazelcast, obviously, but also the market ecosystem for you know real-time data. Uh, I really appreciate those insights, and as usual, I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Great, it was a pleasure meeting you and talking with you.